the things of direct everyday experience involve large numbers of particles or involve things moving very slowly or involve other conditions that are very special and represent, in fact, a very limited view of nature. It's a small section only of natural phenomenon that one gets from a direct experience. It's only through refined measurements and careful experimentation that we get a wider vision. And then we see unexpected things. We see things that are far from what we would guess. We see things that are very far from what we would imagine. And so our imagination is stretched to the utmost, not as in fiction to imagine things which aren't really there, but our imagination is stretched to the utmost just to comprehend those things which are there. It's this sort of a situation we get to hear about tonight. Your experience with things you've seen before is inadequate, is incomplete. The behavior of things on a very tiny scale is simply different. They do not behave just like particles. They do not behave just like waves. Atoms do not behave like weights hanging on a spring and oscillating. Nor do they behave like miniature representations of the solar system with tiny planets going around in orbit. Nor does it appear to be somewhat like a cloud or fog of some sort surrounding a nucleus. It behaves like nothing you've ever seen before. It behaves in its own inimitable way. Well, there's one simplification. At least electrons behave exactly the same in this respect as photons. You see, they're both screwy, but in exactly the same way. <laughs> there was a time, the newspaper said, only 12 people understood the theory of relativity. I don't believe there was ever such a time. There may have been a time when only one man did, because he was the only guy that caught on before he wrote his paper. But after people read the paper, a lot of people kind of understood the theory of relativity in some way or other, but more than 12. On the other hand, I think I can safely say nobody understands quantum mechanics.